Okay, in this video, uh, we're going to pick up where we left off from the arithmetic um, instructions part and look at the remainder stuff. Look at comparison instructions, which goes pretty quickly, um, as well as if statements and actually some more loops and things that um, we can do now that we have comparison statements. So start by looking at comparison instructions. And really, the main, there's just one that we're interested in. Actually, three, but they all work the same. Um, CMP, compare with accumulator. Before we go into the details, what the, we'll think about compare as it has an operand, and it sees if that operand is greater than the accumulator, less than the, the accumulator, or equal to it. And it's going to do, do something different depending on each one of those situations. Um, and the, the best way to think about it is to, again, look into the details of it. So whatever operand it has, it will subtract it from the accumulator, and then it will set uh, the zero and negative flags uh, based on what it sees, uh, it, it, based on the results of that subtraction. If z equals 1, in other words, if, zero, if the uh, zero flag was set, that means the accumulator and the operand were equal because, hey, if you subtract, subtract one thing from another and you get zero, that infers equality. If it's not zero, in other words, if the zero flag is set to zero <laughs> as opposed to one, um, and the end flag, the negative flag, is set to zero, that means the accumulator was greater than the operand. We have a positive result. If the zero flag is not set and the negative flag is set, that means the accumulator is, le is less than the operand. Accumulator minus operand gave us a negative result. So we can, using the, these results of the Z and N, we can see if we had a positive result, a negative result, or zero. And uh, if, you th if you have been in uh, CS2, we, we often talk about, um, I believe it's the comparable uh, interface. And one of the things you see with the comparable interface is you have a single method that must return a positive number, a negative number, or zero, depending on how two, two objects compare to each other. So this is the similar idea, positive, negative, or zero results. Note this only works for unsigned integers. Um, so if, if you need to do a comparison of signed integers, you actually have to do the subtraction manually. Um, and, and not use the CMP uh, instruction itself. So over here we have a um, have some examples. I'm going to load 44 into the accumulator. I compare uh, uh, 44 against that, so it should be an equal comparison. Uh, N is set to 0 because it's not a negative result. Z is set to 1 because it is a 0 result. Going to compare against uh, an immediate of 5. So 5 is less than 44. Uh, negative flag is set to 0 because it is a positive result. 44 minus 5 is positive, so uh, the negative is, is not set. Of course, it's not 0, so, so the Z flag is not set. And, oops. and the last one, we have 44 minus 100 which would be a negative result, so we set the end flag to, to 1, and of course 0 is, flag is still not set because it's not a 0 result. And that's really the, all we do with comparison. The, the only uh, additional thing here is that there is a compare with x and a compare with y um, uh, instructions as well. So instead of comparing uh, the operand against the accumulator, you compare against uh, x or y uh, respectively. Now, let's see how we can make use of a comparison instruction to make um, slightly more, more complicated loops. And, and not complicated, we do more useful things with it. In the previous lecture, we looked at uh, adding three byte integers manually. So we had a section for adding the first byte, section for adding the second byte, section for adding the third. Um, that's actually a, a violation of the don't repeat ourselves principle. And um, we can generalize it 
using a loop to any number of bytes. So in this example, we're going to do a 10 byte unsigned decimal numbers. Um, could be 11, could be 100. We're just picking 10 because it, it works well for, for what we need to do. So here's our strategy. We add one byte at a time, starting with the least significant byte. And going back to our address modes, we're going to um, use the X register as our index of our loop. So it's almost like saying if we have four I equals zero to, to 10, X would be our I, if we were thinking of it in Java terms. We're gonna use that as index of our loop, and it will we'll add that to our base addresses to figure out which byte we're on. And then we'll use comparisons and bran branching as we need them. So key insight here is we use absolute indexed address mode. So for, if we assume that our, lo, our first operand has its low byte at 1000, then we don't actually have to specify every byte. We can load in from 100, comma x. And whatever x is will modify the actual address we, we load from. So if we start x at 0 on our first loop iteration, we get 1000 as our address increase x on the next iteration to 1, and our address will be 1001. Increase x to 2, we get 1002. Increase x to 3, we get 1003, and so forth. So if you think about x as your loop variable, or as your i from, from our for loops, that i will be added to this address to give us our current address. And this is actually how arrays work in languages like C and C++. So let's add them together. 10 bytes, oops, 10 bytes, and this is all we need to do. Start by clearing our carry bit because we do that at the beginning of an addition. And I'm going to load zero into my X register. And now I begin my loop. So I'm gonna use a label for that. So I do a load into accumulator, my base operand one address, which is 1000, comma X. So every time my loop uh, iterates, I'll actually load in 1,000 plus the contents of x as my address. I'm going to add to it the contents of 2,000 plus the contents of x. And we're going to store that into 4,000 plus the contents of x. So these addresses will update based on the value of x here. So load in a byte. Add, an, add a byte to it, store the result back into a byte. Then I'll increment x. In other words, x equal, gets x plus 1. And I'm going to compare x against 10. And that's going to generate either a negative result if um, x is gr less than 10. Uh, it'll give me a 0 result if x equals 10 and it will give me a positive result if x is greater than 10. Well, I'm counting up from 0 to 1 less than 10, 0 to 9 to do this. So I'm going to stop once x equals 10. So I would have done my ninth byte here, incremented x to 10, compare x to 10. If those two things are equal, then I would stop looping. So I'm branching on not equal, branching on x not equal to 10 back to my loop. So once x equals 10, I'm done, uh, and I'll bypass the branch. One more thing. Let's look at how we can build an if statement uh, with our, our comparison and branching instructions. So I have an example here where, um, in kind of Java-like pseudocode, I, uh, my accumulator gets the value at 4,000. If the accumulate value in the accumulator is greater than 200, I'm going to clip it to 200, just set it straight to 200. This will ensure that A will never go above 200. And then I'm going to restore that result back to address 5000. So just an example of, an, of what would look like an if statement in Java or C and um, how we might implement that using branches and comparisons. 
So I start by loading the contents of 4,000 into an accumulator. That takes care of this line there. And then I'll do a comparison. Let's see if, if how the what's in the accumulator compares to the value 200. If what's in the accumulator is less than 200, we will get a we'll set the negative flag. So we can branch and, we, and if we do that, we don't need to do anything more. So we can simply branch on minus to store that result. In other words, if uh, if A is less than 200, we can jump to there. Otherwise, we don't jump and we continue and make sure we set our accumulator to 200 before it moves on and stores again. So this is a, if you study that kind of closely and you'll see, you kind of see how this if statement falls out. All right, that's it for this, uh, this video. Again, if you have questions about the reading and things like that, please feel free to contact me.